Hi, everyone. Um, uh, great talk, uh, Frederick. Uh, I will uh, try to fill in, and uh, you definitely showed some uh, great examples of uh, microelectronics and uh, semiconductor development. Uh, I have been invited, and I'm thankful for that, to talk about the coming CHIPS Act and the terrible shortage of talents. I will also give a couple of um, examples here where we really need uh, to um, upgrade our, our knowledge base. So we have a CHIPS Act coming up uh, during the Swedish presidency. The negotiations uh, to set up the European CHIPS Act uh, is almost there. I, I'm, we are waiting for the final signature by the um, European Council, I think. But uh, basically, the, the foundation is laid out. And you see the motivation here that uh, um, our Commission President, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, stated that we are really in need of, of uh, chips production and chips uh, uh, undertaking here. And uh, the objectives are clear. Uh, we, are, we want to... Can I stand here? Uh, we are definitely bringing back uh, technology to Europe. The ambition is basically to, to also get into like 20% of the world production. That's a long-term goal. Definitely, um, it, it, it is quite diff difficult to reach, but that's the long-term goal. Uh, and um, I think this is good. Uh, we are a little late here in Europe. Uh, the US Ships Act is already go going on. Uh, I think they are about at least one year ahead of us. Maybe we can catch up, uh, but uh, that's not the main point. We need to do something also in Europe. And uh, Frederick uh, talked about the, the pilot lines, how important they are. I think my message here today is basically that we need to, to, to educate people. We need to educate the new students. We need to attract the new students. We need to uh, reskill and upskill uh, already people in the industry uh, to meet these um, long-term goals. So in Europe, we have a, a semiconductor value chain that is really showing that we have some strength in, uh, for example, manufacturing equipment, uh, raw material, silicon wafers, and also silicon carbide wafers, and semiconductor wafers, uh, shortly. And uh, we have a lot of research and development going on. How are we getting that into business? So we need to, to focus on, on how to do the chip design. There's a terrible, terribly big uh, um, demand from industry in chip design and uh, uh, creating IP and so on. Uh, as Frederick also pointed out, the assembly and packaging is coming to be a very, very important field uh, where we also have to, to shape up. So there are some clear uh, initiatives that we have to do, but we have some strength, of, of course. Going back to the, the main goals, 20% uh, of the world market, uh, whether, uh, I'm not sure what year that should happen, but uh, in a few tenths of years, uh, the CHIP Act funding is basically today decided to be uh, 43 billion euros. Sounds like crazy much money uh, for an academic. But uh, it's not basically nothing. It's consisting of both public and private funding, mostly private funding. To realize this goal of 20%, uh, the NXP CEO uh, has claimed that, well, it takes another 500 billions to do that. Uh, and that's, of course, not the governmental money. That's uh, investment by industry that sees the opportunity to, to earn back uh, money. So that's the magnitude of the semiconductor industry in a couple of years in Europe, if everything goes uh, as planned. The training is, of course, a very important part of, of this um, CHIPS um, Act. Uh, Horizon Europe is set up uh, during th for, for three pillars. And of course, you don't have to read that. You already know that. I just wanted to show you the logic. So the CHIPS Act has three pillars. 
And, and the first pillar here is basically uh, what we in the academics are really concentrating on to educate, to research and to, to invest in, in uh, such things. Pillar two is um, this pilot line um, set up. And I would like to say that we have already um, very good initiatives in Europe. We have the three major players, that's um, CER uh, Leti, uh, we have IMEC and we have the Fraunhofer cluster uh, taking the first round of um, pilot lines. Here I just want to claim that um, another type of uh, pilot lines could be the university, professional university labs uh, not producing uh, like um, chips for Ericsson or others, but producing enough uh, hands-on, enough um, technology, but basically the training for all these engineers that are needed. So we'll see what, what, what this uh, comes out with. Uh, we have here in Sweden, um, uh, I don't know the English name, but uh, Tillväxtverket are looking into what, what will be the recommendation for our gov government to, to play with in, in, in the pillar two here. So basically, uh, since I'm uh, uh, going to, to address the, the need of, of people in this uh, business, uh, I will concentrate on that, uh, skip that. So there are lots of, of initiatives already going on in, uh, in, in EU. For example, the Sinano Institute uh, was, um, was actually celebrating its 15th anniversary uh, just a couple of months ago. It's uh, consisting of 25 leading universities and institutes in, in Europe working on uh, understanding chip technology, semiconductor technology, silicon, uh, wide band gaps, um, uh, three fives and uh, what have you. Uh, so that's a major force to, to also bring together, cluster the understanding of semiconductor technology. Uh, and um, then there are quite new, newly started projects like ICOS, uh, which is an international cooperation on semiconductors, trying to bridge also how can Europe, Japan, Canada um, find uh, common grounds in, in understanding how to push the semiconductor technology from the research level, of course, playing into to the industrial level. So uh, this is just started. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm also engaged in the power semiconductor part of, of that um, initiative. So we'll see what, uh, what we can generate here. There is another uh, cluster of um, uh, nanotechnology facilities called Ascent Plus, uh, uh, where, where researchers and of course also uh, companies can, can join and, and uh, get some of the understanding on the fundamental understanding and, and tryouts with uh, with technologies and we have representatives here from from that from that uh, initiative and we'll see it's a time limited um, project but um, this is the kind of actions we have in europe today and finally i would like to just mention uh, what we have here in sweden since uh, we have the opportunity here in Lund, uh, Lund is one of the node parts in, in the MIFAB or MIFAB uh, initiative. We have the director over there. And uh, this is a fantastic um, uh, a gathering of four university labs with, well, what we call state of the art equipment in, in respective fields. We have different focus, Lund, uh, Chalmers, uh, KTH and Uppsala University. You can see some numbers here, uh, they are upgraded, uh, but, but basically this is true. We have so many users, uh, we have uh, many, many companies, we have many spin-outs of, of such a um, cluster of um, clean room technology and, and a possibility to train uh, over the university boards. Universities are always competing, but here we are really go going together and have joint, joint um, uh, initiatives to get funding for instruments and, and so on. 
So uh, we are well e equipped in, in Europe to do that. Um, and since you are here, this is a sort of overflow question. <laughs> uh, are they any good, these semiconductors? Yeah, of course. Uh, I would just say that without the semiconductors, the Green Deal is just to forget. This is the way we can really make a, an imprint, a, a real imprint in, in the cutting the, the emissions and uh, work for a sustainable society. And uh, it's interesting with, the, with the Frederick's comments here, what will the technology bring in 10 years? Yeah, well, uh, we can do um, Nobel uh, level research and come up with things. What, what um, governmental regulations will do will, will have a bigger, bigger effect. Because uh, when, when uh, Frederick is l uh, sort of rolling out his 6G, uh, and the government say, well, you have to limit your, your power-hungry devices to this level. Of course, this will have a huge impact. When we have, um, when we have regulations telling us that your electric car cannot consume more than, uh, let's say, one kilowatt hour per, per, per 10 kilometers, that will have an immense influence on the technology choices. So economy and the sustainable society is the important drivers here. Uh, of course, we should have blue skies ideas, but it will always um, conform to, to what, is, uh, what is accepted in the society. Here is a, a, a picture I, I have used a lot to show what we are dealing with. We all know this uh, global warming, uh, energy conser conservation, and improving efficiency using these uh, different renewable energy sources and uh, trying to minimize the, the, the losses in the conversion. And um, this is one part of the semiconductor world, the power devices, uh, because if we can make these power devices so much more efficient, we, we will really save a lot. So this is a terrible situation we have. Uh, today we are consuming about 26,000 terawatt hours. In a few years, uh, we will double that. Uh, maybe that's not so terrible. <laughs> but uh, the terrible thing is that uh, here's how it looks. Where is that energy coming from? It's coming from 60 plus, uh, 63 percent of fossil-based uh, sources. Uh, semiconductors cannot do too much about that choice, uh, but our conscience can, can do that. Uh, and uh, what we can do is basically that we, we can change, uh, of course, the energy mi mix if we are just uh, clever enough in, in our arguments. But what we can do really is uh, to make it more efficient to produce, distribute and consume that energy. Much is uh, into materials these days. Uh, in power electronics, the materials that uh, will solve the major part of this for, for quite some years will be uh, gallium nitride and silicon carbide, of course. So much more efficient in, in power solutions than, than the silicon uh, for, for the coming years. And here's the example. If, uh, if we can just uh, reduce the energy consumption by, by 1% by having more efficient devices, that, that would result in like 75 typical coal-powered uh, uh, power plants less. We will build millions of these power plants anyway because we are never s satisfied. But, but this is the example of how much we can save by using a more efficient technology, a more efficient semiconductor technology. So uh, we heard about the, uh, the 6G or 5G for the communication, but uh, let's face it that it's not just uh, the uh, telecom uh, industry that needs um, chips these days. Everyone needs chip. Here's a, a, a modern car, uh, and in a few years this will look like a, a not so modern car, but you can see the, the number of different types of semiconductor chips that are into this car. And, um, these uh, autom automotive manufacturers are really um, 
trying to get all the chip designers and, and semiconductor specialists they can lay hands on. So uh, Frederick will have a hard time also keeping these guys in the company. So everyone will need that. In the US, um, I think that their CHIPS Act have, have uh, stated that there is about 10,000 trained engineers needed from the universities every year for the coming, I, won't, I don't know, 10 years or so. Europe has not um, set that number yet, but uh, I think uh, we will face something similar. Uh, speaking with um, ST Microelectronics, Ericsson and so on, the, the, the number of, of chip designers is uh, sort of huge, we can say. Here's the Tesla-like uh, uh, um, figure, and we can see the microcontrollers, electrification, which is the power, uh, power devices and so on, infotainment and so on. The Tesla, the world's most sold uh, car today is the Tesla Model Y, and uh, According to their, um, their um, design uh, meeting earlier this year, 61% of the chip design is done in-house by a company like Tesla. And this will, of course, increase. So they have the, the need for all these designers. Here is the landscape with different materials. So I think my view on sem semiconductors is that it's a really advanced materials technology paired with the really ingenious um, architecture of devices and systems engineers. So it covers the whole range um, and is actually the real nano technology. We are speaking of, of uh, gate, uh, gate um, uh, oxide uh, thicknesses of, of five angstrom or half a nanometer. That's really key nanotechnology. So uh, in the landscape here uh, for, for different power, we have the wide band gap device landscape with silicon carbide devices on the high side here, many thousands of volts. Uh, we have uh, gallium nitride also on, on a high, um, high voltage, but not really that high. And we still have silicon inside. We can never forget silicon. Silicon will always be there, but we will see a much broader landscape with many different technologies. So we need uh, engineers that understands this to produce the wafers, to produce the epitaxy, to produce the different uh, device processing and so on. And uh, we need the, the, the systems designers to put it in, in the right place. So here is uh, how it looks like in, in a Tesla. This inverter here is basically a silicon carbide uh, inverter with 48 transistors, 24 modules. Uh, and they have made, the, they, they took a bold decision and introduced that, and they are continuing on that step. But we will see all the car manufacturers coming, coming uh, successively with, with all these new technologies. So, of course, we can understand how many engineers we need out there. Here in Sweden, we have a fantastic company doing sports car in, in not so far from, from here, in Engelholm, I think. So here's what, what they can foresee. They have done an inverter for these kind of electric motors, 750 kilowatt in, uh, uh, in 10 liters of volume. That's incredible. So that's uh, one thing that we can, can do with, with the new technology, to squeeze it together and maximize uh, device uh, power and, and still don't waste too much energy. And here's another example of how, how much, uh, how much uh, energy we can, we can save if we replace the old system with a new system of silicon carbide or gallium nitride. 40% of power savings can be done in a light rail application. Of course, it, it will cost something, but it, it is there. Uh, here I, I tried some of, of the interesting new features, chat GPT. This is the answer I got. 
I, I asked, uh, what, what kind of chips, where, where do we have chips in the household? And here's the answer. <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> I just wanted to show what, what, what the future is, uh, because some of it is just crazy. I mean, who needs a ca coffee machine that is uh, super coupled to Bluetooth and everything? Uh, so uh, lots of this is, is excess. We don't need it, but, uh, well, we can do it. So my message here is just, we need chips everywhere. We cannot get away from them. So, education. So here's a, a picture I picked from the VLSI Symposium on Technology and Circuits. It's an annual uh, high-level conference. Uh, they were discussing in a panel uh, the college enrollment. And uh, here, is, uh, some, here are some numbers that we can see that enrollment for electrical engineering in red here is not really to our favor. Uh, if you compare with the, with, the, with the line for the computer science, it's more favorably so, thought of by, by, by college students. And uh, here is the big challenge. So um, Frederick and the telecom companies can say, I, we want chip designers. There won't be too many that uh, apply unless we uh, have a completely new narrative. We need to, to, to phrase it like, okay, if you go into chip design and semiconductor technology, you're working for a sustainable, greener world. And uh, we, mu we must find um, um, words in that, uh, in that uh, direction, saying that uh, semiconductors are great fun. No one believes you. So <laughs> together, we need to come up with, with, with uh, many new things. Uh, and what can we do? We need to have the partnership, collaboration, which was the word in the morning in this conference. We need to have interaction with academia and the industry persons and also from the society at, at all. Um, here are some answers from, from that panel in the VLSI Technology Symposium. And um, we need to work on the cu curriculum. We need to make it more attractive, of course. Uh, we need to be there all the time. Uh, students need to see um, industry persons also giving lectures in a much greater um, sort of volume than today. We need to see the practice. How is your working place going, going to be if you go this way? So there's a lot of things. Uh, I just want to, to alert you on these kind of things. We, we see a trend, at least we see a trend here in, in Sweden and in Europe and in the Western countries that uh, double E is not the really the most favorable uh, way to go. It should be because it's great fun. It's so important for the society. Uh, and Frederick, you should show up all the time uh, in the universities, uh, not just here in Lund, but uh, also in, in KTH in Stockholm and maybe we can see people from, from, from the rest of Europe also mixing. So I, uh, I think my time is uh, getting to an end. And my reflection here is that we have a very strong semiconductor infrastructure here in Europe and, and in Sweden also. We have the large institutes, fantastic, world leading. We have also fantastic university level labs. Uh, we have demonstrated so many tech startups in, in this field. Um, Many are sort of, as we heard also in, mo in the morning, that uh, many are sort of uh, merge, merged with, with American companies and uh, technology has moved over the Atlantic. We have uh, actually quite good education. We can see that because our talents run away and are very attractive elsewhere. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, try to keep them. And um, some of of the faculty get old, they get gray hair, and we need to replace these guys. We need to recruit new faculty. Uh, we need to synchronize and collaborate, both at the national level, but also uh, on a European level. I can foresee that we, we should try to, uh, to really have um, spread out courses. We, we, we should have an engineering degree in semiconductors, consisting of um, 
uh, program that is uh, run by, by Lund, Chalmers and KTH here in Sweden, and that should also constitute a node for doing the same activity with, with the other Euro Euro European educational programs. So, uh, we need to make the semiconductor technology interesting for students again. So with that, I think I end. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mika. So again, there is a great take-home message, right? We, we have a challenge. We have to attract more students and to supply this to industry.